yes yes my people welcome back to the channel today we're going to be covering another zoom transition this one is going to be a little bit different though we're going to be adding some extra spice in there if you like your rap trap and draw videos so completely different to our last ones hope you enjoy it more importantly let's get straight into the video no more talk all right you lot we're back in after effects once again we're going to be going through this crazy zoom transition man i can't even think of a name for it it's that mad so i'm just going to call it the crazy zoom you get me so let's just get straight into it step number one you need to find your clips so i've got my first clip and the clip we're going to be transitioning into the second one in the middle right this is the one we're going to be using as our roto layer so you need one two an intro and an outro clip and then you need your roto clip so three in total grab then then come on to step two okay so step number two so all you got to do is now go onto your rotoscope player or the one you're going to be using and drag that over the top of your intro clip okay and then your outro clip just close the gap so now you should have something looking like this just a little overlay on top of it but now we're going to fix that okay so there's plenty of ways for you to do this but now we're going to be masking out our layer i'm going to be using the watch it's a little bit out of focus but that ain't going to stop us in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the roto brush but you can go onto the pen tool you can go and you know mask out the entire thing or whatever then go down into the layer mask then go down to this one then obviously you can click mask path and then move each one just to kind of you see how it's moving you can do that as well that doesn't matter and then you just copy a layer and make the bottom one inverted. But because mine is a lot more of a complicated looking shape and it's moving, I'm going to be a bit more lazy. Well, I won't call it lazy. I call it an unorthodox technique. I'm going to be using the roto brush, okay? So I'm going to go on to double click on that layer and then just fill in this whole thing, yeah? Now you see, if you get what I'm getting here, this is here, frame rate mismatch. So my video clip is 23.976 FPS. This may come across for you beginners. All you got to do to fix this is go into composition, composition settings, and simply set it to 23.976 or whatever your clip is. And now it should just work. You may also get this. For the sake of the tutorial, I am doing it in half resolution to make things quicker. But for you lot, if you're going to be doing any sort of rotoscoping, do it on full resolution. You can change it down here. So just do it full instead of half like me. So I'm going to finish rotoscoping it and then I'll get back to you long once I'm finished. Alright guys, mine's a little bit rough seeing how it's not in focus, but this is. But it will do for now because you're not really going to notice it too heavy. Now you're best not to press freeze yet. I told you just do the rotoscope. Now what you're going to do, don't press freeze. Click on the layer, control D to make two. Then go into the bottom one and click invert on your roto brush and refine edge. Then press freeze, okay? Make sure you do not move the playhead now because then you might get a bit of a mismatch with the top two layers. So what I want you to do once this finishes freezing is simply don't move your playhead, then double click on the top one and press freeze straight away, yeah? So now, after these two are freezing, here's what we're going to do next. So now you're going to have two layers, your inner watch and your outer watch, yeah? So now you're going to label them accordingly, yeah? So I'm going to put this one to rename inner watch. Or you can just rename it to whatever you want. Don't really matter. As long as you can identify what you're looking at. Because me personally, I get a bit confused sometimes if I've got loads of layers to work with. But as a beginner, this may feel like a lot to work with. But So I'm just going to show you the basic way to do it. So now all you've got to do is copy one of these two and bring it to the bottom. And simply name it, I don't know, main watch. That's fine by me. Then you're just going to delete the roller brush and refine edge. Fine by me then I'm just going to drag it to about here because I want my clip to end zooming in around this mark here. So then I'm going to hold these two with shift and click both of them and then drag them to where that ends. So now we have a normal clip and then over here it's just like that, if that makes sense. As you can see, you may have a little bit of a inner ring in there, but don't worry. When we do the effect, you're not going to notice it. Next thing you're going to do is go into both of these layers and up the feather to, let's say, I don't know, 14 12 whatever you want really it doesn't really matter too much now we're going to be making the zoom now all you got to do is click 3d on both of these layers make sure you add motion blur to everything you only want 3d on your inner watch and your outer watch nothing else okay and then you're going to right click somewhere over here new camera then press ok then simply go to the end of it and press ctrl shift d to cut it press backspace to delete it and now you have a camera above this layer now let's get into the actual zoom. Okay, so you're going to get your inner watch layer, drag it underneath the outer watch, make sure your outer watch is on top, okay? 
and then you're going to go into position and simply put this to like something like two maybe just so it's the z values a little bit below so if we move this it's underneath okay so just set it to something like one or two whatever works really again you're not going to notice it now you're going to press this down drop arrow on the camera go into transform then keyframe point of interest and position this is our final destination in it so i want you to get these drag them to the end because that's where our clip is ending actually my clip ends here so yeah there is fine so bring it over to here then press on your inner watch and press the hide button just a little eye icon over here zoom a bit out so you can see what you're doing then i want you to go into this this is the dolly tool it allows you to zoom in into different things so then you just hold and drag until the entirety of your watch is just gone yeah something like this just about there it's not looking very smooth right now but we're going to fix that now so hold all of these and select all of them then f9 go into the graph editor over here you should have something looking like this make sure you're on the speed graph and not the value graph so go into speed graph then select this bottom bit here press this to zoom in and you can see you've got a little line here this is where you're going to start dictating the speed and that so just drag this make sure you're highlighting it otherwise you're going to get a bit dodgy not here so highlight and drag you don't want it all the way but you just want it kind of the way so you have something looking similar to mine it's like that we've got the main movement nailed down now it's time to make the watch transition you're going to re-enable your inner watch and go to where you want it to finish so i want it to finish just around where our last clip starts because this part is going to be when the watch finally comes into frame so keyframe position just at the end of your clip where we made our main watch layer. Go forward a little bit to let's say, I don't know, here. And simply drag it out of the frame where you want it to go. I want it to slide down, so I'm going to keep it around here. Just bring it up. For me personally, it's a bit too slow, as you can see. So all I'm going to do is go into our main watch layer, make that 3D and extend the camera to the end of that clip. Then simply bring these more across to the end, just like that. That's fine by me. I still think it's too fast. So I'm going to go into graph editor, highlight these again and bring it more to the side so it's a bit more smoother. Again, this is me adjusting for my clip. You're going to have to do the same for yours, but it's good for you lot to see the kind of the process a bit better so you can further understand and develop your knowledge, if you know what I mean. So now onto the next step. So guys, I just did some adjusting. Again, you will do the same thing. It's pretty much the exact same thing I showed you how to do earlier. Go into your inner watch layer, make sure that's press F9 so you've got your smooth kind of keyframes. Now onto the next bit. So next step, we're going to be making the drop off of the inner watch just falling down here. So go into your inner watch layer, press Control D and bring it over to see it again. As you can see, this is our original animation. So you're going to go back to where it finishes just about here. I'm extending a bit more. So that's our final bit here. Press right click, go onto time and freeze frame. Now it's not going to move just like that. Delete your keyframes. And this is what we got. Just a simple layer of what we basically exactly need so now let's move on to how to make the drop off cut the layers down to where you want it to start and finish so now what you're going to do is rename it so you know what you're looking at i'm just going to call it watch drop that's fine by me press p okay so you have position keyframe it then press r till this comes up then keyframe z rotation okay now you may notice look at that we have got a wrong anchor point you lot i told you about anchor points last time but if you're new to the channel Here's how you're going to fix that, okay? So here's what you're going to do. And remember, it doesn't need to be completely accurate. Just loosely remember where everything is, okay? You're going to be remaking your anchor points. Go into properties of your new one. Then go onto the anchor point, drag it to the center. Then go into your position and drag it to the right, roughly where it was before. Mine was about there. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. But if you see, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference. So all I'm going to do is simply move it a bit more. Doesn't have to be completely accurate because we're going to see it change either way when we add our shaking. So that is completely fine. Next step. You're going to go a few frames forward to where it ends. Okay. And then simply using the green arrow, hold and drag down until it's come out of the frame. Double click the uh, motion blur if it's not working. So that's what we got now. Then onto your rotation. I'm going to do about, let's say, 200 degrees. Nah, let's say 220 good round number so then i'm just going to simply oh move these keyframes just like that now this by itself yeah that looks okay but we're going to be adding a bit more of a bit more style to it if that makes sense so go on to hold all of them f9 
and then I'm going to drag on the top ones. Pay attention now, this part's important. Position only, yeah? Position only, go into graph editor. Hold the left side instead of the right side. Drag, okay? So we're going to have it starting off slow. Yeah, just like that. Fine by me. If you feel it's too fast, you can always extend them. Doesn't really matter. And then, next one. Hold the bottom two for Z rotation. Graph editor. Now, instead of the left side, you're going to hold and select the right side and bring that across. So this is what i got now. I'm just going to bring it a bit more forward. Tweak it to your liking. That's fine for me. Now the next step. Now a little bit of theory for you lot to understand as beginners. We're trying to create a little focal point for the viewer to look at. So we want people to focus on this little thing falling. But as you can see at the start, it kind of blends in and it may look a bit tacky at first. So all you got to do is let's say I'm going to add deep glow to give it a bit more character. Just like that. It's a bit too much. So maybe make it a bit more subtle like this maybe 0.1 or whatever, then go down to your bottom clip and select Lumetri Color. Okay, add it from the effects tab, go into basic correction, exposure, keyframe it and stick it to, I don't know, two, maybe 2.9, that's a bit too much actually. Two, that's fine by me. Press U so you can see your keyframes, bring it forward to where you can see it falling down and stick it back on zero. So it's something that's very subtle, but it immediately screams out to the viewer, focus on that if that makes sense. You want to give them something to look at and just kind of focus on the effect, if that's what you're going for. If you're going for something more subtle, I guess you wouldn't have to do this. Next step. So now our base animation is done, as you can see, but now we're going to be adding the shakes, which is really going to make the effect. Trust me, it's not the same without them, yeah? So the first thing you're going to do is go into Control Alt Y to add an adjustment layer. And this is for completely free, by the way. So go on to add a effect called Brightness and Contrast. Very, very beginner friendly. So I'll zoom in, then control and left arrow, three frames backwards, brightness and contrast, three frames forward, go on to brightness and contrast again, lift it up to something you like, just say about how much, press U so you can see what you're doing, copy the last ones of the zero, three frames forward, boom, that's it, F9. Now, this is the easiest way to get a transition, as you can see, it does the job, just like that. Clean, simple and effective, but... I'm going to go for something a little bit more crazy. So I'm going to be using two different shakes from my pack called The Trap Essentials. It's recently been released. It's suitable for rap, trap and drill music video editors. And before you lot go on at me, I've made it for free up until Friday as a giveaway. I'm going to be giving it away to one lucky person who enters. If you want to know how to win it for free, go watch the video I made before this one. Okay, I'll give you all the details you need to get it for completely free if you're the winner. So let's go straight to the effect. Now, because it's sliding downwards, I'm going to be using my vertical hip, wherever it is, just there. So I'm going to go into Control Alt Y, then simply drag and drop vertical hit on top. Press U. These are our main ones where the hit starts. So this is where the watch finishes transitioning. So I'm going to bring that just to about here. And already you can see a massive difference. Just, you see already, that's exactly what I wanted. It's sick, but there's one big problem. We need to fix that now. So go on to the bottom layer, simply add motion tile, okay? Then go on to output width and height, bring it past 200, simply bring it to mirror edges, and boom, that will fix that error instantly. But now with this effect, it kind of looks like it's not sliding in at all, and I'm just hitting it in. So all I'm gonna do is go back onto this and simply drag these a bit further backwards and just adjust these just like that. Now we're going to be moving on to the next transition, which is the watch drop off kind of thing. So now I'm just going to cut down my previous vertical hit just to leave what's needed. Then press Control Alt Y again. This time I'm going to be using the same pack, the Trap Essentials. But now I'm going to be using the hard hit, a new addition to the pack. Now press U so you can see what you're doing. Go to where it transitions, which is here. Then simply, if I bring it back to size, simply bring it to where it starts. Now, it's a hard hit, so there's a lot of hit to it. So, I don't need that much. So, all I'm going to do is simply bring down the amplitude until I find one that's fine. Same issue. So, all you got to do is add motion tile to the bottom one again. Now, I've mentioned this before. Make sure you do not, and I repeat, do not copy it from this to this. Because you'll find it may move the anchor point. Which may not be ideal if you're planning on working on the effect again. So, as you can see... I'm really, that's looking really good. I love the shake, but I feel it's a bit too late. So all I'm going to do is simply 
cut these down a bit more, let's say to about here, bring in this a bit quicker, just about there, just bring everything in if that makes sense, just to about there. So again, just make sure you adjust it to your needs based on your clip, every clip is different, but this pack will make sure you get it done much quicker. You see, now I'm happy with the positioning, so I'm gonna cut that down just to there and there, so everything fits inside of it, no diddy. Now I'm gonna go back down to the bottom. As you can see, when the shake pretty much ends, the kind of the Lumetri color effect is gone, right? So all you're gonna do is just adjust it. So go into you, simply bring it here to pretty much where it starts. Again, every clip's different. Do what you need to do in it. I'm just doing what I need to do. See, perfect. So now that's the end of it, you lot. Here is the final clip rendered. That's another beginner tutorial wrapped. Hope you lot enjoyed it. More importantly, hope you learned something. So yeah, man, chat to me in the comments if you want to see anything different. And definitely, you lot have been enjoying the zoom through transitions like mad. So I'm going to be dropping more and more of them getting crazier and crazier. Yeah, just watch for it. Yeah, watch out. So yeah, enjoy your day. I'm, I'm really running out of scripts here in it. So I'm just going to keep yapping on safe.